This video is going to cover the topic of creating rules from tables. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video is, can we write rules by examining tables? And since we are working with rules in this video, a quick reminder that algebraic rules are like equations, but they're equations that have two variables. So you might see something like, 2x equals y, right? And it has a variable x and a variable y. We'll start with the situation that says each student will complete three math problems. And I'm going to start with this um, by creating a table. This table will help me organize um, how many problems there will be if I know how many students there are. And since we know each student is doing three problems, I know that if there's one student, that student's doing three. I would know if I had two students, well, they would each do three, that would be a total of six. If there were five students, and each of those students did three problems, right? Three, six, nine, 12, 15. I know that that would be 15. And what it seems to be kind of a shortcut for me to think about, right, is that I'm just multiplying the number of students times three, right? The number of students times three, the number of students times three. And that can create my rule, right? So let's say we have the number of students, let's use that as S, and we'd say the number of students times three is the total number of problems. But you'll more often see me write that this way, right? Three times the number of students is the number of problems. So we saw our situation, made a table, and then kind of used that to create our rule. But we can even write our rules directly from a table. This time, I'm just going to start building a table. And as we build the table, we're going to see if we can determine the rule. So instead of having um, a name of something like students or problems, I'm just writing x and y for my table. Um, and x, like in a graph, is the independent variable. And y is the dependent variable. You'll also see for this first time, I've used something called um, input and output. So those are some terms you'll also hear us using when we're talking about tables and rules. All right, so I have some X values here. And as I add Y values, I want you to think about what the rule might be. See if you can figure out what I am doing. So when the input was one, the Y value, the output is seven. So maybe think to yourself, what rule could she have used? Did she maybe add six? One plus six is seven. Did she maybe multiply one times seven? Right, that would work too. Or maybe there's something else. Let's see, it has to work for all of them. So if I put the next output, let's see if the input is two and the output is eight. Again, stop and think to yourself, what might the rule be? Right. When I'm doing rules, I always like to make sure I have at least three pieces of information to look for a pattern. So I'm going to give you one more. If x is 5, y is 11. So now think about what could work. Whatever that is, is the rule. So make a prediction of what rule I am using, and then we'll test it out here. So I'm going to put another number here, let's say 10. And I want you to think for a moment about what number you think belongs right here. And if you correctly predict it, then you probably have the correct rule. Did you think 16? Nice. What if my input here is 95? Test it out for a moment and think about what you think goes there. Make a prediction. And now ask yourself, did you pick 101? If so, I have a feeling that you know what this rule is. In each one of these, it looks like I am adding six from my input to my output, right? So if that's what's happening every single time, then that is my rule. So I can write that rule by saying my X value plus six is what gives me my Y value. This is a rule that I wrote based on that table. All right, let's set up another table and see if we can figure out what rule I'm going to use this time. And this time I'm actually just gonna put in a few inputs and outputs and give you a moment to think about what rule I might be using. So I'm gonna give you, let's say four pairs first to examine. So take a moment to look at my table. I have some inputs and outputs, some X's and Y's. 
And I want you to think about what I might be doing to get my Y value when I know my X value. And so um, take a look at these four pairs, but then I'm going to kind of see if yours works by adding more information. So make your prediction. All right, so if I say 30, what do you think would belong right here based on your prediction and your pattern? Did you say 15? If so, nice work. And if I say 62 as my X value, think about what you think my Y value might be. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine in. How'd you do? Did you also say 31? If so, you have found the rule. It looks like the rule here would be that we're taking our X value and dividing it by two to get our Y value. And you can see I've written that in two different ways here, right? X divided by two equals Y, or you could say one half of X equals Y. Both will work. All right, I'm gonna leave you with one more table to complete on your own. So I want you to look for the pattern when you see it, you're going to go ahead and fill in these missing spaces, and then I'd like you to write your rule for this pattern. Right? And remember, the essential question of this video was, can we make rules from tables? And of course, the answer is yes, we can, right? Um, so be sure to show your understanding by completing this table and rule, and write any questions you might have so that we can talk about it together in class.